<clears throat> Hello everyone. Good afternoon. This is Suresh, Suresh Kumar. I'm going to be your host for the day. I'm going to be talking about CMA program. Um, before I proceed, I would like to know if my voice is clear and uh, if my, I'm sharing my screen also. Can you please confirm if my screen is visible, please? Any one of you, please? My sister was saying that my voice is clear. Yes, there is the, the bar is going up and down, which means my voice should be audible. Okay, let's give a couple of more minutes. I know there are some of uh, attendees expected. So we'll give a couple of more minutes, then we will start our session. Thank you guys. Till then, I'm, I'm going to be on mute. Okay, I think we should just start now. Good afternoon, good afternoon, everyone. I'll, I'm very happy and excited to know uh, see all of you in this webinar. Welcome to this webinar. It's going to be a very short one-hour webinar, and this webinar will be covering about the importance of pursuing CMA course and the reasons why somebody should consider enrolling uh, for doing this CMA with backup, and more importantly, what are the opportunities? What are the uh, growth opportunities or new opportunities that the accountants in, 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 in today's world can actually expect after they complete their CMA. So this is going to be a very interesting session. I really want all of you to know, please take this opportunity to know, ask any questions that you may have. I've given the right to unmute. So you guys can, you know, whenever you have any questions, feel free to raise your question, raise your uh, uh, and and you know, and it can allow you to talk. In fact, already I've given the permission to unmute which means whenever you have any questions, please unmute yourself and feel free to ask any questions that you may have. Don't think that this has to be, the question should be raised only at the end. Feel free to talk, feel free to ask any questions as you're pro uh, progressing so that this session is very interactive. Oh, I already see Krishna Mohan, you're already unmuted. Do you have any questions, Mr. Krishna? No, no, uh, I just installed them, please. Yeah, so please go on mute, sir. If you have no questions, then we will interact. Good, thank you so much, Krishna. So folks, I'm glad to you know, talk about the CMA. It's one of the most interesting and easy courses to complete. And, and it's not, though I say easy, remember it's one of the professional courses. So when you're going to write the exams, you will definitely feel the E when you're, when you're sitting in the exam hall. Because professional courses, though it appears to be very simple and easy, you have to work hard and you have to put a lot, in a lot of efforts before you can get those degrees or certifications. Okay, but it's not impossible, it's not difficult. It's not impossible, it's definitely a bit difficult, but not impossible. So, so introduction to EMA, uh, CMA is what we're gonna do. Before we go to talk about CMA, I want you all to understand what exactly was the history of CMA and how many countries are having this, you know, CMA as a recognized uh, course, how many, you know, members are present in this IMA Institute and things like that. In fact, CMA is what? It's a Certificate Management Accountant. And it's programmed by an institute called IMA, which stands for Institute of Management Accountants. And this was established in the US in 1919 as a not-for-profit entity. And now it has got a global presence. And there are, they are present in more than 150 countries. And they've got 10 global offices. More importantly, they have got 125,000 plus members, which means they've got more than 125,000 CMAs who are currently active and serving the uh, uh, various uh, you know, co uh, companies and playing different roles. 
So there are 300 IMA chapters, student and professional chapters, then IMA 150 CMA review course providers globally. So if somebody wants to pursue their CMA, there are more than 150 review courses. I mean, there are 150 plus, uh, you know, entities globally available to provide uh, uh, CMA courses. But that's that's not important. But what is important is to understand that this this is a background, and if we have we have more than one twenty five thousand members globally, you know that's a great thing. And remember, IME service providers in India. There are many service providers in India. Okay, we'll talk about that in some time. But remember that IMA has actually got into a mode of getting into relationship with a lot of universities and a lot of colleges and they are trying to now introduce the CMA as part of the BCom curriculum or BBA curriculum or as part of their commerce curriculum. So I have seen that they these institutions like IMA has got a strong tie up with a lot of institutions uh, in, in India and most of these colleges have actually made this made this CMA course like part one, part two, as part of their uh, uh, syllabus, which helps the students to actually complete their BCom along with that, get their CMA certification also. While some colleges have actually are running the CMA program as an add-on program, which means in addition to the normal CMA uh, BCom classes, there are classes and, uh, and courses provided for CMA, which helps the students to actually complete the CMA course also. So what are the advantages of it? So when, some, when I'm saying students are actually doing it, people who have not even completed their BCom are doing this, which means they are, once they complete their BCom in three years after their you know, BCom, they're eligible. They're they are going to be out of the college with a degree next to their name. Uh, not just a BCom degree, they're going to have a CMA degree as well. Wow, right? So now I know that some of you may be students, some of you may be already a chartered accountant or a CS or cost accountants, and some of you must already be, you know, working in some corporates. Just imagine the competition that we're going to have, folks. Yes, now the young chaps, young kids coming out of the colleges are actually coming with this kind of a degree, and the competitions are getting intense. And you will see why people like to take up this course because this course has got very simple. Uh, you know, uh, structure and it's very easy to uh, you know, focus on those subjects and clear the exams. So just to give you some more details about this network or IMA pro provider network in India, more than 30, 20 plus uh, universities are having this program, three platinum provider, approved providers. I mean, that's all about the relationship IMA has got with the institutions which are providing courses. 40 plus active partners and course providers. In India itself, you will have about 40 plus you know, um, institutions which are provide CMA course. Plus, in addition to the universities, IMA also has got tie-ups with a lot of companies, com corporates, mul multinational companies, because MNCs have now realized that it helps the employees to be trained under these programs and helps them to get the certification, which in turn will help the companies to be successful. So the IMA is really working very closely with a lot of institutions, a lot of companies, a lot of colleges to make the CMA one of the most popular courses across, across. And I'm, I know I do sessions uh, uh, to to a lot of people, a lot of colleges, a lot of um, <coughs> excuse me, a lot of institutions. And I know that this is becoming one of the most most popular and most uh, um, uh, demanded courses in today's world. And you will also understand why it is on demand. Why would somebody actually prefer to become a CMA? Because the kind of opportunities, the kind of you know um, uh, growth opportunities, the opportunities to actually play different roles in the finance and accounting world is humongous. Especially when you're a CMA, you can actually start your career as a small accountant, small staff accountant. But after a point, you can you will get you will be able to elevate yourself to roles like finance manager, finance controllers, directors, CFOs, CEOs, and things like that. I, I, in fact, by the way, I, have, I should have introduced myself in more detail, but I, I just jumped into you know start to the to the topic itself. But if you, if you see, I'm a chartered accountant, and uh, yeah, we have a group of you know a group in WhatsApp which talks about you know various openings, various opportunities. And I remember a few weeks back we had an opportunity wherein uh, it was in one of the MNCs, and that opportunity clearly said that 
basic qualification or prerequisites to become to apply for this role and this was a role for a finance controller it was very clear they needed ca or cpa or cma or acca the so the point that i'm trying to make is today the companies are actually opening up that they don't they, they, they're not just looking at chartered accountants to be the designated controllers designated cfos they are even okay to go with folks who have not done ca but they've done mbas or not mba sorry the acca or cma or cpa now the institutions now the market is opening up they don't have they don't limit these roles to only chartered accountants they have gone they've gone uh, they've agreed they've accepted that you know professionals like you know C, cmas cpas are also you know equally good hands they are equally capable they're equally strong and their opportunities are just getting wider and wider and wider and i mean it guys i've seen a lot of companies looking for cmas to do a lot of their management accounting a lot of uh, you know uh, cmas are on demand in handling a lot of cost accounting manage uh, uh, cost accounting roles in fact you will see that one of the topics that is covered in your um, um, profile in your syllabus of as uh, in cma is focusing on cost accounting cost management it also has a lot of discussions about budgeting process ma uh, process management process improvements internal controls or the financial accounting uh, business decisions like you no know, investment in any businesses mergers acquisitions so on and so forth so the way it has been designed the course the curriculum has been designed is so good that they keep updating the course they keep updating the contents in order to ensure that the students are prepared when they step out of this the you know, colleges or step out of this program when they become a cma they have the relevant experience to manage anything that has been given in the today's world in fact i remember a couple of years back they changed the certain contents they introduced certain contents just to ensure that the uh, new contents are which are relevant which is happening in today's market is introduced so that cma ensures their members are capable they are qualified they have experience to handle all these things so these are the list of just the you know opportunities that cmas will be having in today's world and how do you become a cma we spoke about the history we spoke about the the opportunities but what are the steps how, how do i how do i become a cma i'm sure that is a, one of the main reasons why all of you are in this session i like to show you a few interesting things what do you need you just need to complete two papers wow you just have to write two papers and cma has got just two parts part 1 and part 2 you don't have to write group 1 which will have four papers three papers five papers or group 2 which will have four four papers five papers no four subjects five subjects no here the entire cma course has got just two papers just two papers and each and we call it as part 1 and part 2 <coughs> we call the papers as part 1 paper and part 2 paper and each part has got only six chapters just six chapters i'll show you those details of the chapters that's covered and i'm sure once you guys see it wow well, i already know this you will definitely get the feeling that oh my god this contents are something which we can't study in our bcom there are discussions about break even point there are discussions about <clears throat> margin analysis there is a discussion about elasticity of demand there is a discussion about npvs net uh, net present values there are discussions about a balance sheet revenue recognition profit and loss account there are discussions about internal controls and i'm pretty sure somewhere we would have studied all these things either in bcom or in, in your professional courses and you will definitely get so much of confidence moment you see the syllabus and more importantly you just have to study a right two papers that's it so the first thing is you have to complete those two papers and of course in addition to that you should also have a basic qualification of having some degree bcom degree then you should have two years of experience work experience and you should also have a membership in fact you need to become first a member of ima as a student to write your exams so ima membership is a must for anybody to enroll for any exams so become a member then start pursuing your exams so you need to have a membership you need to clear those two papers you need to have two years of experience and bcom degree basic degree that is what you need and if you have all these things you are you are 
ready to be called as a CMA and you can say CMA Suresh Kumar, CMA Kirti, CMA uh, Kishore, CMA Imran, CMA Krishna, CMA Priyanka, CMA Nandini, right? It all depends on, yes, you need to just complete these things. Once you're done, you're called a CMA. Wow. You, you, in fact, it's allowed. You can call yourself a doctor like Dr. Suresh, Dr. Kishore. You can call, call yourself after you complete CMA, CMA Kishore, CMA Krishna. That's the beauty of this, these courses. That shows that you're a certified management accountant. Then, interesting part is, how, how do we give my exams? And you can add, your exams are conducted across the globe. The best part of this CMA program is, you can write your exams in India itself, which means, why I'm stressing on this is, CPA, if somebody wants to pursue their CPAs, it was required that they have to give their CPAs either in the US or in UAE. They have to travel out of India. They have to travel to UAE, like Dubai, for example, or they have to go to the US and give their exams. That was a must. But thanks to COVID, one of the good things that happened because of COVID is now CP Institute has also allowed some exams to be given in India itself. So anyways, I, I don't know whether it's going to be permanent. But at least for, for the timing, CPA can also be written in Bangalore, in Chennai, in Delhi, Calcutta, Mumbai. So good thing is that they are allowing you to write exams. But whether that remains forever or not, CMA, for example, is going to be, you can write your exams in India, in Bangalore. By the way, I'm from Bangalore. I'm not sure if you know, all of you, are, some of you are from Bangalore, some of you must be from other parts of the country. But yes, you can give your exams in your cities to a large extent. It's allowed. It's all like, online exams. You don't have to write, worry about paper, pencil. Or paper and pen then you can write exams any time during the year of course they've got windows you can write either in january or february or may or june or september october time frames you just have to enroll give your exams and as i said you've got just two parts part one and part two and interesting part is you can write any part first any part second you can write part one first and then write the part two or you can write the part two first and then write the part one it doesn't make any it is not going to have any impact on your results or whatever. And you have to just write two papers and that's it. Whether you write part one first and part two second or part two first and part two second doesn't matter. Or you want to write both the parts together also doesn't matter. You just have to register and give you exams. And interestingly, this course is generally completed within a period of 12 months, max, max, 18 months. I don't think it's, it's a very rare scenario. I see people going beyond 12 months because just two subjects yeah. for you you know when i see as a student i have to prepare for two subjects two papers that's it and why should i take drag it beyond six months beyond uh, if i was you i wouldn't even take beyond six months seven months and i completed my cpa within eight months by the way eight months because i had four papers i completed, completed in eight months and this is going to be a cakewalk for most of us because just two papers and being indians we know how important how much of importance we give it to the to the courses to the examinations to the education and i'm sure we full we give 100 percent dedication and within six months or six or max maximum say 12 months you are through and with, from now we are in april and by next march you will be a cma wow it's it's not it's not difficult guys it's possible and some of you if you're going to focus and start preparing from now but december you can complete exams and you'll be called a cma by end of this year so this is just an example or a list of all the all the uh, portions covered for part one and part two. If you see part one, which is your financial planning, performance and control, it has it has external financial reporting decisions, planning, budgeting and forecasting, performance management, cost management, internal controls and technology and analytics. Wow. So the part one is interesting because you know why the first part, the 15 percentage marks are going to come from your accounting, basic accounting. And here you're going to learn about US GAAP and IFRS at the same time. In fact, the best part of this first chapter in part one is you are going to become, become an expert in both US GAAP and IFRS. If some of you are already working in the MNCs in finance department, accounting department, and if anybody want, are planning to give your get your uh, certification in IFRS, don't do it. You don't have to do it. You just enroll for this. Your one chapter, the first chapter will make you and uh, uh, make you um, get the knowledge of both US GAAP and IFRS parallelly. That's the beauty of this part one. In addition to that, you got other chapters like cost management. It's all about cost accounting, internal controls, all about internal controls, the checks and balances. The performance management is all about how do you evaluate the performances, like the 
uh, benchmarking tools, the uh, uh, you know discussions about evaluation of performance of the managers based on profitability, based on contribution margin, based on you know uh, the budgets, forecasting, and things like that. Similarly, the planning, forecasting, and budgeting one of the easiest ones where people really love to you know get wait for questions from this topic because it's one of the most easiest chapters of all these. And finally, your technology and analytics. You see, they're trying to keep yourself updated with this. They want you to know what exactly is artificial intelligence, is, machine learnings are, what is um, bots, how the AI works, what are cryptocurrencies and things like that. But remember, you don't have to really get to know the details of the coding and all that. It's not a job. But you should know what exactly these terms mean. What is technology? How that can be used in your day-to-day -day work? What How the flowcharts work? Because as an internal controllers, you need to know all these things. So that's a part one. When it comes to the part two, we have, this is, in fact, I know a lot of my students. Okay, I think this section has, has a problem. This is not part two. Part two, they've just copied pasted this. Anyways, so this is all about part one. This is what we discussed. And part two has got interesting things. In fact, I know a lot of my students find part two to be much easier and simpler to clear than part one. Why? Because part two has got maximum number of practical questions, practical things. You just have to remember the formulas. You need to understand the concepts. And um, it's pretty easy for the students to complete part two compared to part one. Because part one has got a little bit of theory, more theory. And if you see part two, it has got financial statement analysis, corporate finance, decision analysis, risk management, investment decisions, and professional ethics. Finally, you know, they try to cover everything. If you see the final chapter, it talks about the do's and don'ts. What are the ethical practices that the members of the IMA should know? What are the things that a member should not be doing? When what is what kind of a behavior the member should be showing to the world as a member of IMA? Because you will become a member, you are like an ambassador of IMA. You are a representative of IMA. You cannot you cannot misbehave. You cannot unprofessionally behave in the in the uh, outside world because it is about about not about, not just about you. It's about the institutes institutes image also. So they talk about what are the ethics, what are the ethical behaviors, what are the logic, what are the rationals behind your behaviors that is accepted, what happens if you find something which is not right, if you are coming across any kind of fraud situations, how do you behave, what are the you know regulatory matters that which that should be you know kept in mind by the uh, students and the professionals. So that's all about your professional ethics. But when it comes to these prop, uh, corporate finance decision making, it's all easy, man. CVP analysis, break-even analysis, margin analysis. Pricing decisions like elasticity of demand that I was referring to. We talk about demand, economics, supply, demand, economics, we talk about that. But we talk about risk management, we talk about decision making like NPVs, IRR, uh, pay, payback method, and all these things. And when it comes to corporate finance, we talk about investments, we talk about share capital, we talk about working capital management, we talk about um, uh, foreign currency transactions and accounting. When it comes to financial statement analysis, we talk about how do you interpret the financial statements, what are the ratios to be used, what are the profitability analysis that you should do. Don't you think it covers everything, guys, to tell me now? See, the first part talks about all the reporting requirements, recognition requirements, planning and budgeting requirements, the cost management, performance management, internal controls, technology. Then we move to analysis. We take, get into analysis and we end with the professional ethics. Don't you think the IMA has done a wonderful job of ensuring that everything that is relevant in today's world is covered in the finance. What is relevant in the finance world is covered. You will have everything, whether it's from the from the point of accounting or from the point of management or in the form of controller, in the form of uh, 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 auditors or in the form of decision makers. You've got all components, all ingredients are covered in this two chapters. Don't think it's, oh my God, so many things will I be able to study? Yes, the, the material is not that difficult to follow. We'll talk about Becker in some time to understand why you should be considering the, the why I think you know it's easy for you to complete. By the way, any questions, people? I'm going, I'm going non-stop, but anybody has any questions, anybody has any doubts, you want to stop, you want to unmute, raise any questions. Guys, make it interactive, please. Mr. Krishna, you have any doubts, any questions that you have, Mr. Krishna? Uh, no, I, I'll uh, pass till then. No questions? Wonderful. What about um, Nandini? Nandini, you have any questions, uh, Nandini? 
or Priyanka? Anybody has any questions? No? Good. Okay, I'm assuming golden is silent, so I'm assuming everything. Well, silence is golden, so I'll, I'll move on, I'll go to the next. I think, okay, how do you become the CMA? I think we spoke about it. We do, we do certifications. You have to have continuous education, career resources are provided by the IMA. You have a lot of researchers and publications available, global communities available for any kind of networking, any kind of events, any kind of programs that you want to participate. Okay. These are the support that is provided by the IMA. In addition to this, what are the benefits of becoming an IMA? That's the most interesting stuff. What, why should you become an IMA? Obviously, for the very simple reason that you can uplift yourself. You can go to your go to the next level in the profession. You can become a CMA and you will be on par to CAs in India, on par to the CPAs in the US. You will definitely be playing one of the most significant roles in your career. A company will look for a leader and CMAs can be one of the leaders. And if you see this, US CMAs, not CPAs, earn about 20, it's not in comparison with CPAs, okay? Just CMAs alone. They earn 28 percentage more in total median compensation than those without both CMA or CPA certifications. So generally, what happens is one of the primary you know, advantages is obviously we all work for money, right? That's, that's That goes without saying. We all are trying to do this. We do, we do these courses because we want to get better degrees so that we can get a better job. Why? Because we want to have a better income. So that is taking care. Almost 30 percentage, 28 percentage than your friends. If somebody is earning $10,000, you will get almost $13,000, $3,000 more. Wow. And that next thing, globally, CMAs earn 50 percentage more in total median compensation than those without CMAs. Remember, this one that we are seeing, the top one is only in the US. But if you are a CMA outside of the US and comparing your compensation with any non-CMAs in other parts of the world, like Dubai, like India, like Australia, like Singapore, the CMAs will be able to earn 50% at least more than 50% of others. That's a that's a statistics. That's what the statistics are saying. And you're able to go in to show a difference in your way you're going to handle things. You will definitely be able to see the way you analyze the problems, the way you analyze the situations once you pursue this course. And then finally, it is one of the globally recognized certification, which is a very important point that we all have to remember. Like CPA is recognized only in the US. CA is recognized only in India, maybe some parts of the uh, you know, uh, UAE, right? But, but CMAs are globally recognized degrees. Globally, the CMAs will have the same same respect, same uh, you know demand, and they are globally recognized recognized uh, professionals. That that makes it outstanding, you know. That because that makes it really really easy and simple for us to pursue this. That's become one of the main reasons, right? If you're a chart, see, I'm a chartered accountant. Can I go to uh, South Africa? Can I go to UK? Can I go to Canada and say, "Was well, I'm a chartered accountant now? Can I just go and sign your balance sheet?" No, I can't. I'm not supposed to because it's not allowed by the Institute of Chartered Accounts of India, right? Likewise, CPAs in the US can do it only in the, they can have, CPAs can work in India, they can, the CPAs can get a job here, but can they do the same work certifications job? No, they cannot. So there are some limitations there, but when it comes to CMA, of course, it has a global recognition because there's no need for any kind of certifications you will have to just carry the knowledge. The concepts are globally the same. The finance concepts, the finance topics are all, are, are all the same. It's only the regulation which makes it difficult and difference. And CMA, you see, regulation is very, very limited. It's not there at all. In fact, code, other than the code, which we have a couple of regulations, small regulations, other than that, you don't have to worry about any compliances and regulations. That's not at all relevant from the exam point of view. That makes it even more easy and simpler. And of course, as a CMA, what is the value you're going to get? You'll have, you'll have the prestige, professionalism will be there. You'll be empowered, you'll be competent, and you'll have a rigorous attitude. So this is what is the outcome of you becoming a CMA. You will become a leader. You'll become a knowledge hub. You will be on demand. You'll be professional. In short, you'll be a professional. And who should get a CMA? I, according to me, you know, you don't stop reading all these things. Anybody who's interested to grow in their profession, Anybody who's interested to have a better compensation, anybody who wants to have a better future, secure future, they should consider doing CMA. I really mean it. Because you see, today, fortunately, 
those uh, COVID, for example, last year took a lot of problems. I mean, a lot of companies were in trouble because of this COVID, right? Not that, you know, we're out of COVID and we are not having problems. I'm pretty sure there are a lot of problems and people are just fighting to get these things settled. But companies, <clears throat> a lot of companies have to shut down. A lot of companies have to let go their employees. But if, if the individuals of such companies are CMEs, they will be able to find a better job. They will be able to quickly transfer themselves to another job without, without much difficulties, unlike their other friends who would have not done their professional courses like CMA. So guys, remember, you, it is very important that we take a decision, the right decision in our life. Taking the right decision is very important. Once you take the decision, don't look back. Don't look back. I've seen some of my students, they take the CMA course and after a point, maybe because of the, the work pressure or because of they're not really, really, you know, focusing on the exams or the course, they just give up in between. Don't have to do it. The intention of you taking this course is because you have a reason. You have to go to the next level in your current job or you want to find a better job or you want to just, you know, uh, get, uh, you know get additional knowledge to be a better superior person in your current profession. Isn't it? Only such reasons will make you the success, a great success, a successful person. So sometimes I see students give up because they feel that, you know, because of work pressure, they quit. Or they say that it's not difficult. It's very, so I'm not able to you know, pursue this. Uh, for some reason, I feel it's not my cup of tea. But that's not, that like, you cannot give that kind of excuses, guys. Once you have decided to go for this, whether it's CMA or CPA or CEA or any courses, once you have decided to pursue it, please, please don't turn back. It's, it may be hard, but it is not impossible. Only people who go through the hardship will be able to live a golden life, will be able to live a successful life. Without difficulties, without any hard work, you think things, will, things are going to come your way? No way. Impossible. You cannot just sit back and say, hey, ho jayega, I'll get this, I'll get that. Nahi hoga. It is not possible. Only if you are having the determination to be a successful professional, determination to pursue this dream, only then you will be able to succeed. And please, so this is for those who have that goals. This is for those who can think that they are superior, they can be a leader, they can be a boss, they can be a game changers. Only those people should really come forward and take this. And I'm sure all the folks in the, uh, in the, in the session today have those qualities because I know there's a reason why. See, so there's, the there's a reason why you guys have enrolled yourself for this webinar, isn't it? Because you want to understand what exactly is the CMA, what are the benefits of CMA, what are the opportunities you're going to get out of the CMA. So you've taken that one step, which your other friends might have not done, which your which there are so many people who have not done this because they don't care about these things. But doing the CMA will mean a lot. You'll have an outstanding profession. You'll have an outstanding profession. And you mark my words, it's called it's true. It's true. And only if you have the dream, the goal, and the vision, please pursue it. And I'm just showing a couple of slides which will talk about the opportunities that you may have. If you see one of the sample you know, uh, opportunities that was seen is with Amazon. Amazon said they wanted a financial operations analyst. The qualification you see, preferred qualification is commerce, BCom, plus CMA from the US. Let's see, we also have CMA in India. CMA is nothing but the cost accountants in India. It's difficult. I'm not saying it's not possible. It's difficult. They have, they have to go through intermediate. They have to go through final. They've got some two papers in each group and each, each stage. And it takes about three years for somebody to become a four years to become a cost accountant. But this one, I'm just talking about two papers and you're done. You will have that qualification. You're through. Next comes the other levels. Like you've got to have an experience of four years and things like that. See, they just show you all these things. These are just various postings. They have four openings and things like that. So this is just to show an uh, uh, update on uh, the Forbes uh, India. There was an article about artificial intelligence. And it was run by some of the IMA members. Okay, this is just to show about that opportunity that you have through IMA. Now, we'll talk about Becca. By the way, let me tell you, now I'll introduce myself. I am a chartered accountant and I've also done my CPA from the US. And I did my CPA sometime in 2007. Yes, in 2007, almost 13, 14 years back, I completed my CPA. And I was living in the US when I was doing my CPA and I did my CPA, CPA using Becker, through Becker. I just enrolled for Becker and, uh, and Becker ensured that I 
uh, ensure that you know the contents the portions the syllabus the the way they prep us for the exam is so 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 effective it was so easy for me to complete the entire course within a period of eight months when i was doing this as a student of becker i didn't know that after some 10 years i'll be doing some sessions using becker material itself and i'll be one of the faculties doing all these things yes i never thought so so i have high regards for becker because it is becker material which made me a cta boss i swear there's no second thought and there's nothing nobody can challenge me on that it is the becker material which helped me and why i'm talking so high about becker is because of one simple reason we all we, i'm sure all of you when you guys were in your first standard second standard third standard what used to happen our teachers used to give us we should take sessions from june up to february or january then in the month of february or early march our teachers used to give us some 30 questions as revision questions you all remember those days and what is to happen out you have to just prepare those 30 questions and the questions in the final exam will come from only those 30 questions isn't it and we used to clear we used to get, go to final exam the questions were coming only from the 30 revision questions and we used to clear the exams and get good marks and that's exactly what i'm saying becker does the same thing the becker is not going to ask you to prepare the whole thing becker knows what is relevant from the exam point of view they will just discuss what is re required from the exams point of view they will make videos they give, they'll give you the contents that is that is your revisions only those 30 marks questions is what is covered in your becker materials and if you go with the prepare with, with to the exam hall after preparing those you know becker material which is just like the example i gave 30 minutes 30 questions you are through you don't have to worry about all the sections all the contents you see one of the things that i showed you is part one has got first part which is about your us gap ifrs financial reporting and all that oh my god that's a separate chapter in cpa accounting is a separate subject in a C in cpa but here is only one part which means they are not, I told you also that you'll become an expert. For sure, you'll become an expert. I'm not going to deny that because once you read from A to Z, you will definitely get an idea, idea of all accounting standards that is relevant in today's world. Okay. But they will also ensure that from the exam point of view, what is relevant for you, and they'll just tell you to focus on these sections and you will be able to appear in the exams with a lot of confidence. And whatever question that comes, you will be so confidently able to handle this. So that is why I always, you know, have high respect for Becker. And of course, this is all about the story of Becker. I don't, I don't think we need to talk about this. I myself is a, is a, a classic example. I was a, I was a student. I am a testimony of what I am today. And I am because what I, I was able to clear my exam because of this Becker. Everything in the first attempt. Everything was in the first attempt. Everything and great marks, huh? It's not joke. I got 93, 91, 80 marks in auditing, 80 marks in my business, 91 in my accounting, 93 in my regulations. That's kind of marks I was able to get by preparing only for 10 days, 15 days. And I can talk about that whenever we get time in the in person or in, in the subsequent sections. But yes, that's a kind of you know confidence that you will get. And just to give you more details, this institution is 60 plus year old institution. It's not a joke, guys. Nobody can live in this competitive world if they're not updating themselves if they're not evolving themselves if they're not going to deliver the things to the students with quality is quality and becker approach a cma review focuses on deep understanding and retention versus note memorization so you can focus more on studying and score i on your smart exams very important they, they ensure that the concepts are understood properly by you they don't have they ensure that they don't you don't have to memorize these things Okay, if you see the legacy, more than 1 million, more than 1 million candidates are prepared with Becker. The top 100 accounting firms across the globe rely on Becker for their employees' exam preparation. I can tell you, like com companies like big brands like KPMG, Deloitte, EY, Ernst, um, P K uh, PwC, or any other big firms, they today have associations wherein they want their employees to become CPAs, they want them to become CMAs, they want them to pursue some ACCA courses and all that. And generally, they prefer this backup. They have tie-ups. They have got tie-ups with these institutions. This backup, they do it. And nine, 2009, and yes, Krishna, you have a question? No, 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 nothing question. No. I'm just adding that uh, even my uh, company also tie up with Becker. Oh, which company is this? 
this is coke okay was it us based one which one k k o c h coke coach okay k o c h coach okay yeah yeah So I didn't. I didn't know who Krishna is. Okay, and uh, we never. I never expected Krishna would come and you know volunteer to this. This is a fact. He's another witness of this. The the programs are really well designed, guys. Becker is amazing, and this is the, these are the two papers. You see the thickness of the book. And if I'm a student, okay, I'll always look at look at the way I prepare is. Oh my God, how much to study? Okay, I used to th- see the thickness of the book. Is it thin or really big? It's not very big. Okay, then every chapter I see how many pages I have to study. That's all. That's that's a student mentality, yeah. When I when I become a student, I have to behave like a student. When I become a lecturer, I have to behave like a lecturer. So I, if I'm a student, I'll see the book only so much. It's not very fat book. It's a very thin book, and that's all you need to know. And plus, plus in addition to this, you will also be provided with lots of MCQs, online access to lots and lots and lots of essay type questions and MCQs. We'll talk about that in some time. You see this, you will have hard copy textbooks provided. You will have e-books. You will have twenty-four months of software access. Over two thousand five hundred plus multiple choice questions. My goodness, underline this. There will be multiple choice questions. Two thousand five hundred questions of MCQs. Why? We'll talk about that in some time. Seventy essay practice questions. Over five hundred digital flashcards, mock exams, comprehensive test pro- progress test, exam tips, study planner, quiz assessments. These are the kind of things that you're going to get from Becca. What is important? Of course, there are so many things. If I was a student, I would look at this. I'm getting textbook. Yes. Am I going to have access to these things? Yes. Because this, these three are very relevant. How long? Two years of license. More than that, I'm telling you, you guys have to complete within eight months. So what is the fun in having two years, right? Even if you have got, so be it. I'll just complete within eight months to twelve months. I'm done with that, right? That's the beauty of this offering. And look at this. They've got twenty-two thousand four hundred five hundred plus it's the MCQs, which helps you to prepare really well. It helps you to go one step further. Why? Why I say you know, this is important is because all the competitive exams today are in this fashion. They give you the question. They also give you the answer. Four answers. In that you have to choose the right answer. It is you have to you have to understand the kind of questions that may come and how to answer those questions, how to read the questions, because. Because I mean uh, to to help you answer such things, situation handle such situ- situations, this Becker will be of great help. Okay, uh, Edu Christian is one of the organizations which is part of Becker, and they provide this US CMA program along with ACPA, along with ACCA, along with a lot of other programs. This CMA is also one of their major programs that they offer to their students in India. They provide live classes in India. I have taken lots of live classes. Uh, uh, through Edu Christine, I have also done a lot of virtual classes like these webinars. Then they also have ensured that they provide art and sales services. They also have uh, you, you as a student, will also have, have access to the recordings. I've seen many students. All the live programs that we do, all the live sessions that we, it's recorded. Why? Because students at times may need to go back and see what was discussed. We want to learn what has been discussed. That's the beauty of this. Uh, no, uh, Edu Christian. They give you the recorded versions. Even if you don't attend these classes, you will have access to Becker's, uh, no, recorded versions. That's of great quality. Yeah, It'll be great. So, what are the program that you have? Classroom programs. Thirty weeks of instructor-led classroom training. Yes, man. This is this is a major thing. Many times, though we may be comfortable doing these sessions or courses through, you know, on our own by just watching the videos. I know as a students, I've seen many times it is it makes a lot of difference when you personally talk to somebody and ask some questions, because recorded versions unfortunately will not allow have that option to and uh, you know raise your hand ask your questions right not possible it's all recorded that is the biggest problem with this right but to handle such situations Edu Christian also runs classroom training physical classes they provide thirty weeks of program twenty seven bar I mean, twenty-four by seven um, online program access is given. Industry expert faculties are there, and you've got more than one seventy-five plus hours of exclusive recordings. Plus, you also have virtual programs. If you're not able to attend this in person over the internet, I think that is what is going to be the future now. Given that we all are locked under lockdown, better to do this. You've got one seventy-five plus hours of live classes. You'll have recordings available. All the other benefits that you saw in the physical class will be there. Only difference is. Physically, you won't be present, and I won't be present. But virtually, we will be able to talk. 
If not me, there are so many other industry experts. There are so many smart, intelligent, experienced faculties that these organizations have got, and they will be able to handle all the students. And this is just a glimpse of the fee structure. If you guys want, just go through it. But at the end of the day, yes, this is going to come with the price. See, if it's a physical class, it's 100,000. But if it's online, they've got eight, it's at 85,000, including taxes. Wow. That's it. And that's a major thing. Then the material will cost you 27, 37,000 or something. So I would say, or this is a third package. First package is classes. Second package is the online classes. Third package is just the textbook. You can just buy the book and study on your own. No other support is given by these guys. Whatever. I think you just have to know all this. And in addition to this, this is something that is some, you have to pay to IMA. Like professional fees has to be paid. If you are a if you're a student, is $39. If you're not a student, you have to pay $245. You have to pay $250 annual entrance fees and $188 as student fees. Exam fees part one is $415. For two parts, you have to pay $415 plus $415. But for a student, it's $315. So this comes with the price, guys. There's no doubt. This is definitely quite expensive from the Indian rupee standard point of view. But the opportunities, the kind of recognition, the kind of opportunities, the kind of growth, all that is, you know, much more, much bigger than these, you know, uh, cost. And sometimes IMA also has provide, run some, you know, programs because of, by which when you pay one of these, the cost will get reduced by half. And last but not the least, I love the saying. Let me read this one. The bitterness of poor quality remains long after the sweetness of low prices is forgotten. What I mean by this? What exactly this means? See, most of the times, being you know, I, as a negotiator, I love to negotiate hard. I like to you know, get my uh, items at a discounted price. I like to get my, uh, I like to buy things at a reduced price. Okay, because I would like to keep the price as low as possible. So, what happens when I pay less price? Obviously, the quality will also be of poor quality. So that's the reason I say. The decision of taking a decision to go with a low cost service provider is related to the bitterness of poor quality that will remain for longer time than the sweetness that you have, the, the enjoyment that you had of getting the same product less price. There's a huge difference. Just because, you know, Edo Christian may come with some premium cost, but I think today they are on par to other service providers. But still, I still if, there, if you think there is a the cost is more, you need to go to other service providers. You're free to do it. It's your money, your decision. There's no compulsions. But just keep in mind that, you know, everything comes with the price. Everything comes with the price. So with that, I'm done with my session. Uh, and now I'm going to be ready to listen to all your questions. And if you have any questions, please go and unmute yourself and raise your questions, people. Please. Mr. Krishna, do you have any doubts, any questions, anything that you want me to repeat, anything that you want me to clarify, please let me know. Yeah. Uh, hi, Suresh. Uh, very uh, thankful you that you have taken the session exclusively on Charter Day so that we can uh, be a, a, a part of it and uh, uh, you have uh, sacrificed one hour of your time for us. It's uh, really nice. And thank you for your that. It's my pleasure. Uh, thank you so much for your acquisition. Thank you very much, Krishna. So, yes, uh, a few things. The title, it was mentioned as CPA webinar. So, uh, is the following session will be about CPA? I think CPA is tomorrow, isn't it? Oh, maybe, maybe I was uh, I was wrong. But I just cl clicked on the CPA session. But uh, it's, it's fine. Uh, even I want to know about the same as well. Hello. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, okay. So, uh, one thing since uh, when we compare with CMA and uh, CPA, so uh, if you want to grow at, at a higher level to the next level, so uh, which one should I opt uh, in between these two, CPA and uh, CMA? In fact, Okay, I think, you know, since we may have some more time, I think I can show you, talk about the CM. Um... Yes, Ravi, we can talk about this. Okay, we, you, since I think, you know, you guys wanted to even do the CPA, I can talk about CPA in another, you know, I'll just open the slides. But at the end of the day, what matters as a CPA is, guys? Uh, CPA is very similar to CA, but the difference is you need to have, you have to write 24 papers. Yes, Ravi, you have a question? Go ahead. Hello, Ravi. 
So unmuted, you have a question? Yeah. Hello. Okay, I think I have a question. CPA can be done online very much, very much, Ravi. CPAs can also be done online. In fact, uh, what I will do is I will open the slides of CPA. It is easy for you to uh, look at the slides and some of your questions may get answered there. One second. Huh? I just stopped sharing the screen and share the big screen. So is this seen, sorry? Yes, sir. Yeah. Uh -huh. You can see the CPA slides? Yes. Yeah, yeah. yes. Okay. Sh sh I don't, see, there are, there are about, uh, there are a lot of slides. I think, you know, we will take just five or 10 minutes to talk about CPA. I know some of you may be interested to know about CPA. So we'll talk about CPA. So there are a lot of, you know, interesting things about CPA. Uh, one of the most interesting thing about CPA is, of course, the opportunities are going to be very similar to the CAs. There are lots and lots and lots of, you know, money. And you are going to be recognized both in the US and in India because India today, you see the examples that I'm showing Barclays, for example, or Mac McAfee. These are the companies which actually have asked for CPAs in, or the CAs for their profiles. Okay. okay, there are a lot of opportunities. While the job opportunities are humongous, as a student, if you want to become a CPA, you need to just remember you have to complete only four papers. I just talk about those four papers. Give me a second. I'll tell you two, two important things, okay? The number of the prerequisites. Yeah. Sir, but my main question is, I'm are you listening? To... Yes, yes, I'm listening. You have to talk. Tell me. So, uh, sir, I am Ravi Kedia. And my main question is, sir, uh, is CPA can be done online was my first question. Now my question is, if I have to do CPA, then I have to go to some other country. No. Is this true? You're from which place, Ravi? I am from Delhi, New Delhi. Sure, that's the reason, okay. Uh, no, the information... Like people, is wrong. like people, some people said me that you have to go to America or somewhere else to do a CPA and then come again after completing your CA. No, no, no. CPA exams can be now given in India. That's what I told in the... In, 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 okay, uh, sir. You can write either... You can you, Before COVID, that was a requirement. You have to go to either US or go to UAE and do the okay, okay, sir. Uh, the exams, but now it is available in India. Yes, Ravi. Yes, Kishore. Yes, you've raised your hand. Can you unmute? Yeah, uh, yeah. Hello, Kishore. Here. Tell me, Kishore. Uh, actually, actually, I just wanted to know. Ki, uh, like uh, rightly said by earlier, one of the contestant. Actually, the course uh, probably was for CPA, but it's a good thing that uh, uh, CMA has come in and a lot of good knowledge has come in. Thanks for that. But uh, just wanted to know, ki, uh, what, what is the roughly package one person gets after doing this course? Maybe in CPMA, visa vis uh, CPA. Can you guide on this something? It's, quite a, bit, it's a great question, uh, Kishore. At the end of the day, as I said, you know, we all work for money, right? <laughs> yes, great question. So I'll tell you what, it's going to be very difficult to answer that question. But on an average in the US, it, it says, uh, the statistics says, a fresher, a person with no experience, a fresh CPA with just maybe a years of experience, is said to be earning about sixty thousand to seventy thousand dollars of salary, and when it comes to India, he can get easily about ten to to a lakh rupees, and CMA also in the range of eight to nine lakh rupees. But of course, CPA will get more, huh? I swear, because CPA is much more advanced than the CMA. So when it comes to this compensation, definitely CMAs. I mean, CPAs will get more than the. Uh, CMAs. But to a large extent, it will be very similar. But remember all these things, whether you're CA, CPA, CE, ACCA, MBA, and things like that, will get evened out. will get evened out after a point. When I say after a point, after you have grown to a particular stage in your career. Yeah, with the experience. Exactly. With exactly. the experience. Okay. And uh, one more thing. After doing these kind of courses, uh, ideally one should... Uh, think about working in India itself or he needs to uh, think about going out and pursuing his career outside. Means 
uh, what, what would be the ideal situation after doing this course as compared to CA? When, if one has to stay in India, then uh, CA would be the best or uh, he has to plan to go out and do the job? Very good. Excellent questions, Kishore. Seriously, <laughs> well, well thought of questions. Yeah. Yeah, I think Thank the you. job opportunities are available in India, sir. There's no doubt. I think I showed you a couple of slides where we were talking about the opportunities from Amazon. So yeah. opportunities are definitely open even in India and more in countries like UAE, Dubai and all that. In short, today those days are gone where I need only chartered accountants. Only I need BCom graduates from India. Those days are gone. Why? Because today they are looking for people to work in multinational companies. In fact, the, the, the situations are turning in such a way that they want people to focus on uh, they're focusing on internationally recognized courses like C ACCA, CMA, CPS. Why? Because that gives them the opportunity to also export, I mean, tra transfer their employees to other countries. When, when mm -hmm. US companies setting up the operations in India, they will prefer to have a, a chartered accountant in India plus a CPA if, if, to, to ensure that he is able to understand not only the Indian regulations, but also the requirements in the US. So in short, Kishore, yes, the opportunities are definitely open. You don't have to worry about traveling to the US or to other countries to find a job. Opportunities are definitely open and available in India. Today, things have definitely changed. Big time. Okay, great. Great. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Thanks for the lovely questions, Kishore. Yes, Sir, one more question. Uh, one more yes, question. My name is Ravi Kedia. Anji. Sir, I have mentioned a question. Please read the question. Thereafter, we will talk. Which is better after coming to CA, CPA or CFA? Yes, it's sir. Both are totally different ball game, yeah. Uh, what what uh, you want to be now is a question. If you are planning to get into practice, you want to be in the industries like um, where you want to be in the books of accounts, where you want to take care of the order, internal control, and things like that, CPA would be the choice. But CFA okay. would be a better choice if you're going to be in institutions like management accounting or mutual fund or investment analysis. Those means share kind of, market, means uh, ah, share yeah. market in broader term. Yes, 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 exactly. Okay. Good. Yes, Keta, Keta, Keta Kichi, you have a question? Okay. Yeah, sir. Yeah, yes. sir. Uh, yes. Question is uh, for that paying that fees and all, uh, the institute are going to uh, give some scholarship or not? There will be some kind of discounts, man. Definitely, there are some discounts. In fact, I think now today and yesterday there was some kind of discount given by IMA. They give or for this entire week they've got some discounts. They run some programs. There won't be any scholarships as such, but there will be some discounts given at some unique time in the month or in the in the year. Say it comes, it keep, they keep issuing such circulars and they promote people to pay for their school uh, uh, the membership fees. Okay. By the way, I want just five minutes of your time, guys. I just want to know, show something about CA, CPA because I know Krishna, Mohan and others may also be interested in this CPA. See, one of the most important things about CPA is the require. it's a state-driven program. Which When I say state, you know, unlike in India where CA is run by the CA Institute, ICAI, but in the US, every state has its own requirements. First and foremost thing is they say, are you eligible to be a member of my state? They check. And they see your education qualifications. They check your experience before they can give you a student right, right to become a student. So that is what we mean by general rule is generally you're supposed to have five years of education, five years, which means MCOM, MBA is what is expected. But some states allow even BCOM is recognized as a sufficient requirement to become a CPA. Like for example, California, Tennessee, Virginia are some of the examples of states which considers BCOM is, pre is sufficient for becoming a uh, becoming a member of the CP uh, of that state board, and most there are other combinations like Alaska, for example, BCom and MCom is allowed, MCom and uh, sorry, BCom and MBA is allowed, and some states like California also accept CA, CWAs. I did my CPA from Colorado State Board of Accountancy. They accept CAs, they accept CA inters also. Okay, if you want more details, go to this becker.com/state, and you go there, you'll be able to choose the state where you can you are eligible. So this is unique to every person. And I would also urge that please go to your, uh, talk to our uh, counselors from Educrist team, give your information in more specific details because every individual will have unique situations. It's very difficult for me to know, say, yes, this is doable, not doable, not. So I would request all of you. Very much true. 
I know, Ravi, I know that was a question that would come. <laughs> Everybody has a unique situation. If you're a CA, yes, yes. 90% age, you, almost all the states accept it, Ravi. Okay. Okay. And just to give you the steps, you need to first see whether you're eligible. Then okay, so I am watching. Uh, then apply for getting this, um, you know, become first apply to the state. Then you apply the, once you are eligible, apply to the state, become a student and then okay. prepare for the exams. And I am taking a screenshot for this. Sorry, Ravi, you're saying something. I am taking a screenshot of, the, of your slide. Yeah, so I, that I can read after also. Okay, this is steps and you can Google it also. It's not a big deal, it's available everywhere. So once you are prepared, you have to just, you know, enroll and write the exams and complete your exams and you become a CPA. Very simple. And there are four subjects, auditing, business, financial accounting and regulation. Unlike in your CMA where you are just two, pay, two parts, we've got four, pay, four parts here. You've got regulation, you've got FAR, you've got auditing and business. And there's no combination. Whichever combination that is appropriate, you can go for it. You can either write auditing first or regulation first, business first or financial accounting first. Or this can be the second paper, this can be the last paper, this can be the last paper. It's okay. Any combination is fine. Student ask me, should I write these two papers together? Don't worry, boss. Whichever you think is right, whichever you are comfortable, write it. And if you see the type of questions you're going to get, there will be a lot of multiple choice questions. MCQs are many. Then you will also have task-based simulations. When I say task-based simulations, it means that they give you a situation and they ask you to answer those situations. And the best part is they'll also give you the answer. You have to choose the answer there and give it. That's all. That's all. It's like they give you the answer and you have to choose the answer. <laughs> I'll give you an example of this. Yes, yes. Ravi, our, can you go on mute? Sir, because of you, uh, our chance has come. To, our chance is, has come. Ravi, please go ask questions only if it is relevant. I mean, let me finish this. Then you uh, raise your hand. Then I'll allow you to unmute. Okay? Because we need to run. Uh, I want to ensure that others don't get disturbed because of these things. Yes, yes. Thank you, sir. So if you have any questions, raise your hand. Then I'll uh, allow you to unmute. Okay? Thank you. Okay. Then, if you, if you see this, the past percentage is, uh, sorry, the, this is not a past percentage. Uh, where is the past percentage? There was a past percentage. Okay. I just want you to look at something. Wait. Ah, this is a very, very, very important section. So generally what happens is they give you, you have to write one paper at any time that you want. You don't have to write all the four papers in one go one shot. You can write the auditing paper today. After two months, you can write business paper. After three months, you can write regulation. Then you can write your FAR. Or you can write first FAR, then regulation. Whatever combination, it's fine. But the point that you have to remember is you have to complete the three sections, three subjects within 18 months from the time you clear the first subject. For example, if you are enrolling today and write your exams and clear the exams on August 15th. Say, for example, you've written business as your first paper. You got the results. You clear the exam. So from the 15th of August, 18 months is the time that you have to clear your other three subjects. Okay, sir, okay. okay. Which means if you don't complete it, what happens? Nothing will happen. You just have to write this first paper again. That's all. The countdown of 18 months starts from the time you complete your first paper. Once you complete the four papers, and generally I see people complete within eight months to 12 months. But yes, I've seen some people waiting 18 months to complete it, but that's okay. But 12 months is fair time for this also. And this is just a synopsis of the different timetables when the scores will be released. That's not relevant. Okay. I think ah, this is another interesting sub sub stuff. When you're writing your exams, guys, you have to remember that there will be five testlets. For example, if you see, the first testlet is your MCQ. The second test is also MQ, MCQ. And remember, when you're writing your exams, when you're starting your exam, the time starts. There are, these are four hours papers, okay? In case you, after you complete the first testlet and close it, before you open the second testlet, you can take a break. But remember, the time continues to run. You the, the, the clock runs. There's no, they're not going to stop the clock because you want to go and eat something. You want to go use the toilet. No. The test after the first testlet, you want to take a break. Sorry, the time is going to run. After the second testlet, you want to take a break. You can take the break, but time is going to run. After the first booklet or testlet of task based simulation, you want to take a break. Definitely, you have to compensate take a break because they give you a standard break. And that helps you to take some 
break, have some food, go to the toilet, and then come back and write your second test leg, our task based simulation, and third. So, in between, you have one break that is given. And when I was a student, when I was writing, I didn't have all this. The time was just continuously running, and there was no break in between. So, we have to go to the toilet house, you have to plan then. Kab jana hai? Why should I go? I mean, should I really go? Is it that urgent that I cannot even stop? You know, and things like that. So, this is just an example of how the simulation looks. So, they give you a situation like this, and they also give you ask you whether this should be retained like this or that should be deleted. They give you the choice also. This is what we mean by task-based simulation. Is it difficult to clear these kind of papers, guys? Once you've mastered the program, once you've understood the concept, once you've understood the syllabus, it's so easy for anybody to answer these questions. These are the examples of the questions that I'm showing. These are the type of questions that you're going to get. See, they give you a consolidated financial statement. They'll ask you to please, please fill up which accounting standard says. This, they'll also... There will, be, there will be an option for you to search for that and then, yes, Ravi, tell me, Ravi. Yes, sir, I want to ask, uh, sir, I have completed my BCom uh, from Delhi University in okay. the year 2018. Okay. So, can I apply for CPA course? Am I eligible? You completed your BCom in 2018. Yeah, in 2018. Yes. Am I eligible for a CPA course? I think one of the slides said that no, just become is also sufficient. Yes, okay. there are some states which allow you to write that exams. Yes, yes. Yeah, sir, but I got 44% name my graduation. Marks is secondary there. You just have to have okay. that. Isle you up Edu Christian helped us uh counsel say bath TJ, they helped us phone TJ, and they'll be able to help you exactly okay. where you will be eligible. Okay. Okay, sir. Thank you, Pat. And if you see this example, that is giving a situation and you have to just fill in the blanks. Fill in the blanks. And this is the pass percentage, guys. See, this is the average pass percentage. If you see the average pass percentage, you got 55 percentage auditing, 68 percentage for business, 53 percentage for FAR, and 64 percentage for regulation. Remember, this means that the chances of somebody clearing the exam is very high. And remember, this is the overall pass percentage of people from across the globe, not just India, not just people from India. I, if it is India, I'm sure this will be added by another 20 percentage. At least 80 percentage will be the minimum pass percentage because we being Indians are smart. We give importance to our education and I know that we ensure that we take everything seriously and do the exams with a lot of seriousness. Right? So that becomes an advantage that you may have as a, as when you're writing the exams. But this is just a statistics which shows the chances of somebody clearing the CPA is at least 53 percentage. And this is, this is the average. Okay, another interesting part is students who prepare with Becker have cleared the exams much quicker and easierly compared to others, which means that two times your pass percentage is doubled up because you're doing it through Becker. I told you, right, as a student, I could I was able to complete the exam in the first attempt because it was easy because the way the contents were prepared, the, co the courses were prepared, the syllabus were made. So I think we spoke why Becker. I think we discussed at length about this. This is just an example of the MCQs. It'll ask a question. And if you choose an answer, you can say, sorry, the answer is not right. The right answer is A, option A. And they give you the reasons why it is A. So this is the beauty of Becker. They give you the answers online. They also give you an explanation as to why that should be the answer. And they also have options to do mock exams like these. They give you a real life situation. If you look at this, this is just an example of the first testlet where you have some 35 questions or something. And you have to as you're solving these, and remember, if you have any doubts, say, for example, ninth question, you're not sure, you just mark it. It becomes red because that will mean that you have to go back to the ninth question before before you can submit this test list. You can go back to the ninth question and solve the problem again, look at the question again and try to solve it, and then come back and submit it. But once you submit the test list, you can open that test list. Till the time you have not submitted, you can play around with this first question, the particular question, go back and forth and do it. Once you're submitted, you cannot. Yes, Ravi, you have a question? Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. Bolly, sir. Sir, uh, I, currently I am in CA Intermediate. I have to give my attempt in May 21. Mm. So, sir, I am asking that uh, like CS exams are uh, uh, are, held, are held in the school type, school models like in schools. So, CPA exams will, how CPA exams will be done, conducted in, in India, in India. There are a lot of probe matrix centers. When I say probe matrix centers, these are institutions 
Okay. Like offices where you will have to just go. Yeah. So, so we have to go there and give the exam. Anji, Anji. Yes. You have to go to the centers and give the exams. That that does it. Means it doesn't mean we have to sit on the on our uh, on our desktop and give the exam. Yes. We have to go the go to the particular centers provided okay. by the C P provided by the authority. Exactly. Exactly. Okay, sir. Okay. Thank you. Thank so you so much. So these are things as that we cover in C M A, folks. It's very similar. But only thing that I would like to stress is, I have seen that they they also help you in you know placement assistance after you complete your course. They help you in building your resumes. They set up the interviews. They also help you in finding the right opportunities. And and that's all. But only thing that I want to emphasize is, only four papers. You can write all the four papers in one go, or in any combinations, or any paper that you want to write. You can write in four instalments. So generally, I encourage people to write the paper that you are comfortable with. First, prepare for one paper. Go write the exam. Come back. Then focus on another paper. Write the exam. Come back. Third paper. Prepare. Write the exam. Come back. Then the next paper. Finish your exams. You're that. You're a CPA. That's all. Is it difficult? Definitely not. But it's going to be challenging. Definitely because this is a professional course. And if you're yeah. planning to settle down in America, yes, you can have a CPA. You can get a job immediately in the US. A lot of openings are there for CPAs. There's a huge shortage of CPAs, and you can definitely find a opportunity in in the US, in North America, in Europe. A lot of places they recognize in CPAs, US CPAs. Even in India. So currently, where where are you posted? Bathkar. You have done. Bathkar. No, no, Bathkar. Here, Ravi. Oh, personal questions. Okay. No, no personal questions. Yes. Okay. Any okay. any other questions, free people? Krishna sir, do you have any questions? Yes, it is. Why? Yeah, every time we use the internet, I will definitely have a question. Hi, I think your name is very close to God. If you have any question, let me know. Just move on. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Uh, no questions. Okay. What about Imran? No, no. Uh, you have a question, please. Sir, yes, I have few. Yeah. Uh, this one, uh, when compared with C C P A and uh, C M A, with C M A we can work anywhere in the world, and uh, with C P A we can work uh, in India and U S only. No, no, nothing like that. C P A also is equally globally recognized education uh, certification. See, the, the the thing is, C P A in advantage of C P A versus C M A. As a C M A, you are more of a management accountant. But CPA is more of an accountant where you have the knowledge to prepare the financial statements, to maintain the books of accounts, to ensure the internal controls, internal audit, and compliances are taken care of. And primarily, it is on demand in the U.S. and in other locations wherever the U.S. companies are present, because they would prefer to have somebody who has the knowledge of their lo local laws, local tax rules, local accounting standards. U.S. gap. If you are a CPA, you don't have any knowledge of U.S. gap. But it's not very difficult. It's hardly some here and there, some differences, some changes. That's all. But yes, but that is what they expect. But as a CMA, you will never be exposing yourself to things like you know preparing the balance sheet and all that. I mean, you will you will after a point. But even if you are given that responsibility, uh, you will not be able to confirm if that's been in line with IFRS U.S. GAAP unless you you have been trained in that to a large extent. But a CPA will they will be different because you are going to be an expert in those things. Auditing, for example, is never covered in CMA. Auditing is one of the papers in your CPA. It is not a, it's not a paper in CMA. Which means uh, I might look at you know recruiting Krishna or Kishore or Imran as my employees, and I might engage. I, I they've been doing some of the US clients who wants their books to be audited from India. So that's a difference. But CMAs cannot help me in auditing. They cannot. Because they, they, their knowledge is limited towards management, but they can they can help me in preparing MIAs, any kind of M and A's, acquisitions, and things like that. Also, just like CPAs. Hope that answered your question, Krishna. Yeah, yeah, really. And, and another question, uh, like uh, for CPA, uh, what's the total cost you, you can expect and for CMA? I think the cost is quite. Is, uh, CPA is much higher in terms of cost because. Um, every exam you got to pay a fees, which is very similar to what you saw about four fifty or six hundred dollars. I don't have the real numbers, actual numbers, but I think about two to three lakh rupees is what will be the cost. And given that you have to write the exams in India, you are lucky that you know the cost will be reduced by at least forty thousand rupees because you don't have to travel, you don't have to worry about traveling to other locations, get a visa, air tickets, the accommodation, and things like that. Uh, so I'm for CMA, three lakh, sir. Yeah, and for CMA, 
will be about 1 lakh to 1 and a half lakhs okay. thank you yeah. good imran you have any questions imran khan or kishor chavla Uh, yeah, Kishore. Yeah, no, no questions. It's going fantastically. Thank no you so much. Thank you. Yeah. Good. So with that, I'm done with my session, guys. But if you have any doubts, any questions, anything that is still you know you have, but if, uh, you're not, you were not able to raise, please don't hesitate. Speak to Becca. Speak to Edupristi. They are. They have got wonderful you know associates. They'll be able to um, handle any questions that you might have. Feel free to you know. raise your concerns any questions any you can share your situations you, because every you, person has got their own set of questions own set of you know situations you can talk to them and they'll be more than happy to help you okay thank you so much nice meeting all of you you guys have a wonderful um, afternoon and rest of the week and tomorrow we are going to do a session and there again i'm be talking about cma if you're interested please join us thank you thanks a lot same day thank you thank you very much